Okay, good evening. I'll uh, call the meeting to order and uh, for the planning committee. I see all members in attendance. Uh, any disclosure or pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? Uh, seeing none, okay, I've got some opening remarks. The public meeting is being heard by the City Council Planning Advisory Committee and public notice has been given in accordance with the Planning Act. The non-elected members of the Planning Advisory Committee are Mr. John Beltutis, Mr. David Joyce, Ms. Catherine Brown, and Mr. Paul Jennings. Citizen appointees may ask questions and participate in the discussion in order to assist in making recommendations to City Council, but may not make motions or vote in connection with the public meeting. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Planning Committee or City Council before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of City Council or the Ontario Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the City of Bowel before the related bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless, in the opinion of the Tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Comments received at this public meeting as well as written comments will be considered by the Engineering Development Services Department in analysis of the applications that were part of the public meeting tonight. A recommendation report will be brought forward upon receipt of all agency and public comments in the future. Any persons wishing to be advised of the Belleville Planning Advisory Committee's recommendations with respect to today's applications are requested to provide their name and address, as well as the application in which they have an interest in writing to the City of Belleville. And so with that, we'll move into the public meetings. Uh, 3.1 Notice of Complete Application, an introductory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 10-245. 318 Coleman Street, City of Balville. Owner is Jacob Stewart. Agent is uh, Indidia Cervanias, and I apologize for the pronunciation. Echo View Consulting Services, and file number is B 77 1146. And could I have staff present the application, please? Certainly, Mr. Chair. The subject land is located on the west side of Coleman Street, north of Moira Street West, and south of Harriet Street. The application proposes to rezone the subject land from a uh, residential uh, fourth density zone to a special residential sixth density zone. Uh, the special provisions that have been requested include to reduce the parking requirement, setbacks for parking, width of a two-way driveway, and to recognize existing lot frontage, lot area, and front yard setback. The subject land is developed with a duplex and the application will facilitate an addition containing two dwelling units for a total of four dwelling units. Staff has not received any correspondence at this time from the public regarding this application. The official plan designation of the subject land is city center, as well as being located in the West Village District. Back to you, Mr. Chair. And thank you. And uh, we have uh, Kent Randall. Uh, that will make a formal presentation from Echo View, Echo View Consulting. Mr. Randall, you've uh, joined the, there you are. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good, evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Kent Randall. I'm principal planner at EcoView Consulting Services. Or the agent uh, for Mr. Stewart, the applicant. Um, and I do have a, a short presentation that I'll make. Um, and I guess I'll share my screen for that. Give me one moment. Oh, um, I think I need to be made a host to share the screen. Okay, uh, let city staff take care of that. I noticed uh, we've got city staff sharing a screen as well. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> it was asking me if I this stuff. Okay, so everyone should be able to see that now. Okay, so uh, thank you for... for um, Give me the time here tonight. Um, 
The, uh, as, as Andrew mentioned, the application is concerning a property at, at 318 Coleman Street. Um, and uh, what's being proposed is, is a uh, rezoning to, um, from the residential fourth density zone to residential sixth density exception zone, as Andrew mentioned. Uh, the exception zone is going to capture um, several uh, deficiencies uh, related to, to, to lot regulations. A lot of those deficiencies, as I'll get into, are, are related to the existing development. Uh, but the purpose of, of this particular application is to permit um, a, a double duplex as defined in the, in the zoning bylaw. Um, there's currently uh, an existing duplex on the property uh, and the applicant is proposing to to build an addition on the back that would create uh, another duplex that would be joined uh, with the, uh, the front duplex uh, by a common wall. Uh, here's just a uh, site location just from Google Maps just to show you where, where we're talking about. Um, and then this is air photo of the, of the property uh, question. So the, the proposed uh, R6 exception um, will recognize the following. So lot frontage and area, which are related to, of course, the existing lot. Um, front yard depth, which is related to the existing uh, dwelling unit um, or, or duplex dwelling unit. Um, and uh, some of the, so the, the, the parking space uh, provisions that we are requesting uh, relief from um, would be uh, the result of the, the the additional dwelling units. Uh, however, we, we do believe that, that they're appropriate in this case. Um, the, uh, the, the parking pad is, is there now. Um, it can accommodate the, the additional parking with, with some, uh, some minor improvements. Um, what we are proposing is uh, one space per unit. So there'd be a total of four units on, on the property that would, uh, um, uh, that, that would serve the, the, the double duplex. Um, and, and then we're also requesting just some minor um, uh, relief from, from some of those parking provisions related to, uh, you know, interior si side lot line. Um, the other one is, is the parking space as relates to the street line. Um, the parking space is, uh, and as I'll show on the, on the next slide with the concept plan, um, the existing duplex is right up against the lot line. Um, and so the parking spaces are also kind of right up against the boulevard. Um, so, so what we're requesting is relief from that, that setback from the, from the boulevard. Um, and then here is just a, a, a closer look at the, at the concept plan. Um, and you can see here is the, the existing two-story uh, duplex, and then this is where the, the additional take place. And the parking area, um, which is shown here, will, will accommodate the proposed four spaces. Um, so that is uh, the end of my presentation, but I am happy to answer any questions that the committee or public may have. Thank, right, you. thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, any questions from committee members? No, I don't see any. So thank you, Mr. Randall. And I've got no other uh, speakers for this application. So I have a resolution that the Jacob Stewart application uh, number B-77-1146 be referred to the regular planning advisory committee meeting for consideration. Okay, somebody move that. Councillor Feeney, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. Uh, 3.2, notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed amendments. Whoa, somebody, sorry, my the sharing of the screens becomes a little difficult because I have now lost my, there we go. Uh, I've got the agenda on the screen. Notice of complete application introductory public meeting for proposed amendment to Belleville official plan and zoning bylaw 10-245, uh, 188, 190 and 196 Dundas Street East as well and 120 and 120A and 126 Burnham Street, City of Belleville. Owner is Artistics Holdings Incorporated. Agent is RFA Planning Consultant Incorporated. And file number B-77-1161 refers. And could I get staff to present the application, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay, so the subject lands are located on the northeast corner of Dundas Street East and Burnham Street and currently consist of four separate properties. Uh, two of the subject properties are currently vacant and one, 
and the other two are developed with three low density dwellings containing a total of five dwelling units. The application uh, that you have before you today uh, proposes to merge these properties, uh, to amend the official plan designation, and to amend zoning bylaw 10245. The application would facilitate the redevelopment of the subject lands with a four story, 38 unit apartment building consisting of 12 affordable rental units and eight barrier free units. The official plan amendment proposes to redesignate the lands from commercial land use to residential land use. And the rezoning bylaw amendment proposes to rezone the subject lands from general commercial C2-22 zone and residential fourth density R4 zone to a residential seventh density zone with special provisions. The requested special provisions include reductions to the required lot frontage, lot area per dwelling, front yard depth, exterior side yard depth, landscape open space, dwelling floor area, number of parking spaces, distance between parking area and habitable rooms, interior and rear lot line depth, uh, sorry, and uh, an increase to the permitted lot coverage. Uh, to date, staff have received correspondence from three members of the public, although uh, I believe you were circulated some additional correspondence prior to this meeting. Uh, and in addition to this, uh, the city has also received an application under the Community Improvement Plan uh, for Program 3, which is the Affordable Rental Housing Tax Increment Equivalent Rebate, and Program 6, which is the Accessibility Top-Up Rebate. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your presentation. And we have uh, Spencer Hutchison from RFA Planning Consultant that will do a presentation. And also Iqbal Hussein um, is available to answer any questions. Mr. Hutchison, you're uh, in the meeting. Thanks very much. Um, if staff could uh, bring to the, the screen the PowerPoint presentation, that would be helpful. Thank you. While we're waiting a second, I, I thank Thomas for his introduction and overview of the, the project and the couple of uh, elevations and site plan. And I'll just run from there and to add a few more details. And well, that's interesting. Okay. Um, yes, if he would uh, allow me access, we did email in last week, the presentation. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, if uh, if not, uh, do you have the presentation available where you could uh, share your screen? Yep, that's what we're going to jump to now. Just bear with us, sorry, okay. for a second. No, that's no problem. Um, okay. Okay. So... I'm just gonna have to work me. I've got it here on my computer as a PowerPoint. So I just need a little bit of guidance to bring that up as a, a shared. Yeah. yeah, if you go down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see yep. the shared screen. Yep, thank you, sir. I apologize, not totally. Is that okay now? There we go. You're all set. All right, with that little delay, Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak tonight. Um, here is the subject property. And uh, as noted, uh, 188 to 196 Dundas Street East and 120 to 126 Burnham Street because of all the previous uh, uses of the property. Um, so site context, the property has just under or 0.26 hectares. It's within the urban service area. It has a, and because it's a corner lot 
technically the shortage frontage is, is the front. So Dundas Street is the front and it has 40.7 meters. And up the east side on Burnham Street, there's 72 meters. Um, as, as we've become aware to the north is, is single family lower density residential uses across the road or office buildings and a little plaza. Um, to the east is a parking lot and other office buildings. And to the west are more single family dwellings and a um, pile on sign. Um, and it, as Thomas referred to, there was three older residential buildings with a total of five. A couple of years ago, there was another one, but unfortunately it burnt down and uh, was destroyed and cleared off the site. So in terms of preparing this application, uh, we met with staff February, 2020. Um, we had a submission in December, 2021. Uh, based on comments from staff, we revised a few things and submitted second submission in March 20th. And in the package was official plan amendment, a rezoning application, uh, planning justification report, site plan, building elevations, floor plans, servicing brief, storm monitored management report, grading plan, environmental noise feasibility study, and a parking brief. Um, because of the, the CP railway tracks south of Dundas and because of the volume of traffic on Dundas Street, uh, we did an environmental noise feasibility study and uh, normal typical study, and it has some recommendations about windows and veneers. Uh, which can be incorporated into building structure. Um, so here's the proposed site plan. My, unfortunately, probably a little small. Uh, four stories, 31, uh, 38 units, not to be condominiumized at all, to be rental. And as 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 was mentioned by Mr. Deming, um, the owner is already working with city staff on the the funding programs for providing uh, affordable housing which will entail entering into an agreement and, and you know, signing on title that 12 of these 38 units will meet the city's criteria for affordable housing. Um, On-site uh, on parking is tucked in behind and inside the building. So this is mo mostly from a streetscape perspective. Um, we wanted to bring the building over to Burnham and over to Dundas. Um, and so that it, whether you're walking up Burnham Street or you're walking along Dundas Street, all you have is a, a, a green landscaping strip along the road. There isn't parking in front of the building. It, it's more presentable. The building is such that the, the entrance is on a diagonal at the corner. Um, so that coming in and out, you come right to the corner and then from there east or west or north um, to, to really be a pedestrian focused. Um, as noted, uh, the owner is also working with CMHC to meet their criteria and just under a third of the units will be uh, rent below the 30% medium total. Um, and 30 of the 38 apartments will have small balconies to provide a small outdoor amenity space. Uh, site site context is, is, is context in this case is very important. Uh, the location of the property. Um, it's on Dundas Street uh, East, which is a major arterial road into the city from the east, uh, which brings the benefit of uh, transit bus routes going both ways to take you right downtown or to the east end or to the mall. Um, the uh, as I said earlier, the main entrance is angled at the corner and a sidewalks provided all the way around the perimeter of the building to encourage pedestrian traffic and focusing back to the front door. But the other key factors is, you know, almost kitty corner just to the north, uh, sorry, southwest is as a plaza with a drugstore and uh, other amenities, a uh, PV store. Um, there's a small grocery store within 150 meters. Uh, there's a coin operated laundry just on the same side of Dundas to the uh, west. Um, you go to Foster, which is just the corner, go, walk south, and you're on the Bayshore Trail. Um, and you can walk 
along the way, uh, Bayshore Trail, there's picnicking and there's uh, uh, baseball diamond. Um, along the other side, south side of Dundas Street East, there's a kin Kinsman Pool, Splash Pad and Play Center. Um, and as I said, there's a bus stop. So th this is, if any um, part of Belleville is well suited um, to not having a motor vehicle, I would say this site has um, all the amenities. Uh, you can walk over and do your laundry. You can walk over with the kids and play, or you can walk down to the waterfront. Uh, you can go the other way, and, and there's stores and shops and Thomas Trust and everything else. So, in context, um, it is a location where you would, in the planning documents, would put higher density residential. A um, couple of conceptual elevations. Uh, the bottom is the front. It doesn't quite show right, but I mean, the elevate the corner is sort of flat, but it is actually diagonal. This would be facing Burnham, and the top picture faces uh, the west, uh, the houses on Foster. Of course, we, we reviewed the provincial policy statement, and we're in a settlement area in close proximity to the downtown. Um, and we're uh, promoting density, and uh, we believe it meets all the criteria of the provincial policy statement. This is the official plan, and what is important to notice is the subject property in, in green is already de uh, designated for commercial land use, as are all the three southerly houses on Foster. Um, the whole width between Foster and Burnham Street is already designated for commercial. So uh, whether it be apartment building, office building, that's what the plan, the official plan already calls for. Uh, the residential starts north of the subject property on Burnham and there's one last house in the northwest corner that is still residential. Um, to be clear about it, we, we did request a, an amendment to the official plan However, there is a sentence in the uh, commercial designation that allows medium and high density residential uses. So um, an argument could be made that an official plan amendment really wasn't necessary because of the sentence under the commercial designation. Sorry about that. And then we, next page, of course, is the zoning. Uh, again, the south side of the uh, subject lands are already zoned C2 commercial. Uh, the north half is our four residential. That's uh, the, the section that, well, both sections we we're rezoning to the R7. Um, for comparisons across the street on the east side is all commercial, as is the um, south to the west of us at the corner. Um, the first property is already commercial, so it is not residential. Um, so we're uh, going from R4 and R7. Or C222 to a special R7. There are a lot of check marks, but a lot of them I would suggest are, are technical. And uh, there's a chart to follow. So uh, I rather refer to the chart than the check marks. So there, there is the table that we put together um, that looks at zoning compliance and all the criteria. Um, we use the R7 zone, which is for high rise apartments. Minimum lot frontage, we're four meters short, but that is the land that exists. Uh, so that's just recognizing the width we have. Uh, minimum lot area requires six, uh, 72. We're, we're asking go to 68, um, partially on the basis to provide affordable housing and to uh, provide the units we are to make the whole project economical. Front yard, um, which is to Dundas Street, um, we're shrinking in half. But again, that was to bring the building closer to Dundas Street instead of pushing it north. Um, 10 meters or you know, 35 feet setback is, is in my mind on a major street, a you know, a, a waste of space. Um, you know, when you think of most urban areas in, in higher density, whether it's the office buildings around us, they tend to pull to the street. Uh, rear yard, um, and this is important, the normal rear yard seven and a half, we're pro providing 12.3 meters. 
you know, so quite a substantial upgrade. Interior side yard means uh, towards the west. And normally it's seven and a half meters or half the height. And um, if you look at the site plan or you remember the site plan, this is an L-shaped building. So the wing of the building that goes along Dundas Street, it is indeed um, 10.2 meters from the west property line. But once you come over to Burnham Street and the wing of the, uh, the building going north-south, it actually is uh, 22.5 meters off the west property line. Um, so substantial setbacks that um, both to the north and the east that recognize the existing uses already there. Uh, building height, um, in the R7 zone, there is no building height specified. Uh, we're asking 13.55 meters as the flat roof of our building. Lot coverage, we've exceeded uh, 20% to 28.6. And conversely, the landscape open space has been halved. Um, dwelling area for uh, one unit um, meets the requirements. The two bedroom units are slightly smaller. Uh, parking at 1.25 would be 50. Uh, we are uh, requesting actually 32. Um, I'm sorry, this wasn't updated when we, we put four more parking spaces. Um, and I'll deal with that in a second. And then distance between the driveway and the main building. Uh, this is a common issue with all apartment buildings across Belleville, which I think will be updated in the new zoning bylaw. It pushes parking areas 25 feet back from the building. Um, most cases, um, you have a sidewalk and then the parking area and it becomes 1.25 meters, which is a sort of situation you see at the Magnolia Gardens off Albion, that closeness of parking. Um, then uh, off street parking, we're a little close to the street line because we've pushed the building over to the east and the same with the interior or rear lot line, it's 1.5 meters. So when we talk about parking, um, I referred to documentation prepared by the city and their consultants about trying to encourage um, uh, affordable housing. And there is a report on your website that talks about affordable housing and comes up with criteria. And the criteria does allow 0.5 parking spaces per, a portal, uh, per affordable unit. So 12 units at 0.5 equals six parking spaces. And we have 26 others, which is 20, uh, 26 apartments, 26 parking spaces. So for the regular apartments, one parking space per unit, and for the affordable, 0.5. Again, stressing the location and the access and the walkability, um, I think that is supportable in, in my planning opinion. Um, in all planning applications, and when you look at the provincial policy statement, you have to look at the policies and the regulations in their entirety and their trade-offs. Um, and I would suggest this application, the trade-off that we're asking for is reduce parking, um, but I think it can be supported, and a bit higher density of units um, to provide affordable housing. Um, you know, if these are regular apartments or going to be condos, we wouldn't have in this discussion about 38 units. So I just want to make the trade-off that's being suggested. Um, yeah, so to summarize, there's official plan amendment, whether it's required is, is arguable, um, but we wish to put it all in residential to be clear about it and to change the zoning. And we believe we'll bring intensification where you want it, where people can walk and uh, get to wherever they need to be. So I will conclude at that. Thank you for bearing with me. Available to answer questions now or later as, as need be. Thank you. And uh, do thank you, you. on share? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, and then I noticed that uh, 
uh, Iqbal Hussein is also uh, listed uh, to answer any questions. So I'll open it up for committee members. Uh, any questions on this application? No, uh, Ms. Brown. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a question related to the parking. Um, Mr. Hutchison did a good job of explaining the um, the number of parking spaces for the residents of the uh, building itself. My question would relate to visitor parking. Um, where do we anticipate that visitors to residents in the building would actually be parking the cars? Yeah, thank you for uh, that question, Ms. Brown. The, I think when we, you know when when we calculate one per per unit, um, I think we're anticipating, um, and it would be marketed this way with 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 the, uh, affordable housing even on the twenty six units, that we don't anticipate that every apartment is going to have a, a car. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about this a, a week ago when I was at the hospital. Um, this is in walking distance of the hospital, and I don't know how many people work in the hospital, but so for example, there, there's a situation where people, you know, can walk or take the bus. So but clearly this apartment building is based on the use of public transit and not vehicle oriented, and um, whether everyone in the unit will have one car, uh, we don't believe so, but it's a valid question to, to be answered. Okay, uh, Ms. Brown, do you have any follow-up? Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, related to the uh, landscaping at the at, on the west side of the lot, sort of at, we're trying to explain where everything is, um, the, the apartment building and the parking actually backs onto existing um, single-family dwellings. And I'm curious as to what kind of barrier or landscaping will occur between the parking spots, given that you're indicating that the um, it's only 1.5 meters from the parking space to the next lot. Yeah, uh, thank you again, Ms. Brown. Yeah, that's a, a bit deceptive. I mean, we have to, for the zoning bylaw, take the closest measurement, um, but that's only in one part. And if you just bear with me, let me see if I can um, call up a better version of the site plan. Um, to hopefully better answer your question. So just bear with me for one second. Um, drawings. No, sorry, this one. Okay, I am going to, where's the icon? This one, sorry. Let me um, share again, uh, site plan. Share. Hopefully, does that show up now? It does. So it's sort of a, a it's the west property line. I, um, I so in the left corner, which is a Dundas, the setback is 1.67, and then it, it juts into 1.52. Then in the corner, it's a whole corner um, out of gr all green space. So no cars, that, you know, the last, I guess the house that would be found on lot 98 would have all this. And then along the north side, it starts at 2.3, narrows down to 1.5, and then kind of bulges out a bit. So that's the physical there would be as shown a 1 high, 1.83 high meter fence along both uh, property lines. And then in between the fence and the parking areas, there would be, and this would be all laid out and, and agreed to on title as a site plan, um, a landscaping plan with vegetation, trees um, to the satisfaction of the city and, and staff and would be approved on title as a, um, a site plan agreement. So hopefully that elaborates a little bit on the um, landscaping issue. It does, thank you. And let me, okay, stop sharing. Yep, there you are, sorry about that. No, no, no problem, uh, Councillor Alsop. 
Thank you, Chair, and uh, through you to uh, Mr. Hutchinson. I was just wondering if I could piggyback on uh, Catherine Brown's question surrounding parking. I understand that a number of the units uh, are going to be affordable and accessible, uh, so they may not have need for a car, but if we consider things like secure lockup for bikes, uh, mobility devices, scooters, uh, because even low-income individuals will often have another means of transportation that isn't a uh, motor vehicle. Yeah. No. Sorry, let me just, uh, which icon here for a second, sorry. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Also, And actually, you pointed a fact that I, I missed over. Um, on the site plan and in the building, uh, we're proposing eight outdoor parking, sorry, out, eight outdoor bicycle racks, sorry, and 24 bicycle storage inside the building. So there will be a room uh, set aside for bicycles and other um, electronic uh, vehicles as it, or however you, sorry, I can't think word, but there will be a room on the first floor or at ground level where you can, if you had a bike, uh, up to 24 bikes we're allowing space for, or if need be could be reconfigured to provide uh, for the other uh, means of um, mobility for individuals. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Sanderson. Yeah, thank you through the chair. I'd just like to point out to the group that on page 114 of our package, the landscaping is there as well as the bike racks. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions or comments? No, oh, seeing none. Uh, I do have uh, a list of uh, the public members who would like to uh, comment, and I saw some some uh, comments pop up on the the screen there. I do have a list uh, provided from staff, so I'm going to refer to that now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hutchison. Uh, I have Leslie Lewis uh, listed first, and you're in the meeting, and you have the floor. Thank you. I don't see me on the screen, but that's okay. Um, you probably have to just uh, activate your video uh, down at the bottom left. Not there. Okay. Well, we can hear you if you if you're oh, comfortable okay, to. Click on okay. We, we can hear you, so if, okay. if you're... I, I see my name. No, I don't yeah. know why. The start video, there it is now. That wasn't there before. Okay. There you go. Um, as you see, um, thank you for having me have a chance to speak. Um, I've lived on at 129 Foster, so on the west north corner of that building for 37 years um, and have seen many proposals to that piece of property through the time. Um, that's the reason the resident, the commercial property went up one from the other things along Dundas because of a previous attempt to do something there. Um, when I first got the letter, I was quite pleased. Oh, look, residential all the way up. That's terrific. And then um, I read the variation, the um, special provisions. It caused me grief. Um, it's, it's un unconscionable, really, and I'm re referring to the thing that I wrote and sent in, that um, this is completely out of character with the neighborhood. There probably aren't 38 houses on Burnham Street. Now there will be 38 units in that building. Uh, I thought there were height regulations. I recall somebody on Dufferin Street having a problem with the height of a building some years ago and would suspect that that's really too high for the area. Um, the density of it is unthinkable, really. The inhabitants would have to have smaller than usual required apartments. I didn't know that there was going to be affordable housing, but I don't think that excuses making the building, the apartments smaller than they ought to be. I don't think that because people don't have as much money as everybody else, that they should be assumed to require less space than the ordinary regulations. Um, the landscape areas, I, I chuckled, there's going to be a little square of green on the other side of my fence. Perhaps you're going to build me a new fence. Um, that gives me no comfort whatsoever. There's going to be a lot of traffic and a lot of business there. Uh, the building would be twice as close to sidewalks as usually regulated. And, and um, Mr. Hutchison made a, a, a lovely case for why that's okay. It's not okay. 
it's not okay to have children have to run out of their building and land on the Dundas Street or land in the parking lot without any extra space. The landscaped areas, one meter, two meters around the edges, that's not greenery. There would be more units and parking spaces, and you've talked about that, and I, I, I rail at the assumption that because people don't have a lot of money and might need affordable housing, therefore they're not entitled to have a car. They're not expected to be able to have a car, and, and only some of them are going to be able to put bicycles in a place. It's, it's unconscionable, and, and having lived here for this many years, I don't walk as much as I once upon a time did, but it's not that easy to get to the grocery store and then carry groceries back. It was when um, the TSC was Semples, but it's not now. The laundromat that you're talking about is two blocks down. I, I don't think I'd like to carry a baby carriage and some bags of laundry to go and do laundry down there and then have to get back again. The, um, the building has the potential, I think, to reduce the value of the houses around it. That, that's my house. Um, I know people who live on Burnham Street have talked about their sewers and there, there are regular problems with the sewers on Burnham Street. I, I don't know how you're going to double the population there. I did have a question about the affordable housing and now I see that that's been answered. I think if something were maybe two stories and did not require the vast number of variations that this building requires, it would be considerably more acceptable to the to the character of the neighborhood and to the, um, to the inhabitants that are currently here. I would feel very badly knowing that people who are now going to be my neighbors are going to have to live in small apartments, are going to have to have not parking. And by the way, Burnham Street does not have street parking all day. There are those um, exceptions for the two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon during the week. People won't be allowed to park on the street. So they can't have visitors who come by cars. They can't all have a car. It's unconscionable. So I'm I, I and I did put in my my writing because I was irked. It's not good to irk me. I'm retired. I have lots of time to do other things. Um, I think this it appears like a greedy attempt to cram a lot of people into a small space. It's Belleville. We have a lot of space around the city. We don't need to have that kind of density inside a, a an already established neighborhood. So I I very earnestly ask that this be modified to be a much smaller building and use the regulations that are in place for reasons already. And with that, I'll stop. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Lewis. Uh, any questions from committee members? No, I don't see any. Uh, so thank you very much. And I'll move to uh, the next public member, uh, Brian Gay, I have listed. I think he won't be. If staff could just let me know whether uh, Mr. Gay is uh, available. He's not in attendance. Okay, thank you. Uh, move on to uh, Kathy uh, Thibault, I believe. My apologies with the pronunciation. And she's available by phone. If I could have staff connect her, please. I have nobody joined by telephone. Okay, uh, and next I have Ryan Sharp. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, we don't see you, but uh, that's your choice whether you want to activate your camera. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I was trying to activate it, but um, yeah, I mean, certainly the, the previous speaker, um, she's just her neighbor, and she highlighted some of the concerns that I think are um, very pertinent, um, but I, I'm kind of in the middle in terms of my perspectives and opinions. I think certainly in redeveloping that corner, it would probably improve um, property values to an extent in that those are new developments um, and it would serve upgrade sort of the existing kind of facilities and infrastructure in that corner. So um, yeah, so I'm not, um, I wouldn't say I have a, a, a negative opinion of it, say I'm kind of in the middle, um, but I just wanted to know in terms of I guess the time frame of that development, do you know how many years it would take? And then I guess the other uh, point of concern would be um, in terms of some of the mature trees around just that area or around the fence line, if those would be preserved and to what extent. Um, and I guess just in terms of 
um, you know, the overall, um, you know, I guess for traffic, would, has, there, has there been any studies in terms of if there would be an increase in traffic? So I guess it's only uh, 30 or so, you know, units or so, like it's not a, a huge amount. It's, it's not like a huge condo. But I'm just wondering if, if it would be perceptible in terms of the, because I know sometimes cities do studies like flow kind of uh, uh, maps that show where traffic would probably kind of load onto or where it flow onto. And I just was wondering if, if, that, if there was a perceptible difference in where traffic would be flowing, you know, either onto Foster or, or the surrounding area. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. I know staff are noticing or noting your questions and comments and uh, a couple of those, I'm just gonna refer back to Mr. Hutchison or Mr. Hosen, if you want to uh, uh, provide a response, that'd be appreciated. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll deal with the traffic one first. Um, Greer Galloway uh, did a, a traffic brief, a, a traffic comment letter for us, uh, as suggested by staff. The, the site plan shows a exit only, westbound exit only in the southwest corner. So um, if you want to leave the property and head downtown, you can go out to Dundas Street, but you cannot turn left, it'll be uh, curbed and such, so you have to go eastbound. Um, having said that, the main entrance is on Burnham Street in the northeast corner of the property, uh, across from the parking lot and the uh, driveways for the parking lot across the street. So uh, traffic would be funneled to Burnham Street. Arguably, if they're going northbound, or they potentially could turn left and go up Burnham. I would think the majority of traffic, um, if you're going west, you'll make use of the, the entrance I just referred to. If you're going east, then you would go down to Burnham Street and, and wait your chances to make a left turn. Um, and that was that was sort of tied in with, with the parking lot across the street to focus the, the traffic on Burnham Street. Uh, trees, um, every effort will be made along the periphery, um, but it also always has to remember that in my previous experience, to, pr to pr protect a tree, you have to have snow fencing out as far as the branches, the drip line. Um, so that's a big circumference to set aside. And um, whether some of those trees will have roots in that area, which is shown to be parking and, and uh, driveway, potentially it will be looked at and will be considered as part of the site plan. Um, we won't want to, but I'm not going to say here every tree is going to remain, um, and we'll look at the health of each of them. Uh, timeline: um, I'll start it off, and, and the owner can to can add his two cents. Um, this this pro project's been on for a while. Um, I, I think economics, uh, you know, the land has been bought and and being paid for, or being paid for. Um, subject to the approval process and wherever that takes us, uh, you know, fall of 2022 um, to, to start doing it. Um, as, as noted, um, the owner is applying in various sources of other funding. Um, that may be a factor to get the CMHC and the city's CIP program to line up, but it, it is to start while the iron is hot and, and sooner rather than later, um, because as we all know, without affordable housing and housing and rental apartments are desperately needed across, across all of the Quinney area. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Sharp, uh, the floor is still yours. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments. Okay, um, I guess the only thing else I wanted to sort of ask is in terms of, um, you know, the, the overall um, sort of design aesthetic, like sometimes I've seen, um, sort of planning designs that uh, start off a certain way and then they evolve over time based on, you know, the, the needs of the community. The, the, but in terms of what has been shown in terms of the overall plan and structure of, of the site and how it's gonna be developed, um, will it likely reflect very closely to that plan or could we see an evolution of that plan over time depending on the needs of the construction crew or depending on, you know, changes of, you know, the community, like, because sometimes I've seen where you might have a development and it might change very radically over a period of time. And other times it might 
you know, there might be a mandate in place where it has to adhere very specifically to a particular mandate that the city is, you know, putting forth towards that development, um, you know, for that development or for, for developments as a whole, you know what I mean? Whether it be, you know, maintaining certain artistic standards in terms of how the architecture should be uniform with other uh, parts of the community, things like that. So I just wanted to know, I guess, will, will, you know, will there be an evolution from the original plan? And to what degree, or is it, or, or is there more sort of artistic license that's given to the development crew over time? Okay, I'll refer that to the agent for a response. Thank you again, Chair. Um, just, just, just to be honest, and 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 my planning colleagues on this uh, meeting, unfortunately, the Planning Act and legislation in Ontario, unlike other jurisdictions really doesn't allow as part of the approval process, except if you're in a heritage area, to lock in architectural details. Um, the box in terms of where it's located, how high it is, that is fair game. Um, so I just wanna be you know, blunt about it up front. Um, but we put forward a proposal, which we've shown this evening, because that's, what the owner wishes to proceed with and has sort of cost it out and, and whatever. At this hour, I have no knowledge or any information that there's any need to change that. Um, I guess the only proviso is we're all living through right now, supply chain and everything else. Um, who knows how available brick would be whenever, you know, brick is required and everything else. But I think the intent is to provide a, uh, building on Burnham and uh, Dundas that reflects its uh, arterial road and coming into the Belleville from the east. And, uh, you know, these buildings are, are there for many generations. So the intent is, and, and we can work out ways of ensuring that uh, uh, and to the committee, um, you know, the owner can uh, write down details or whatever on, on, on his intent and, and, you know, confirm in writing his understanding. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Director Ashton. Yeah, I think just to add to what uh, Mr. Hutchison said, I think um, there might not be a guarantee of what they're proposing as a conceptual site plan is exactly what's being built, but we would very much expect it to be very close to what is being proposed in terms of what's being put forward. And uh, <clears throat> so we wouldn't expect any major deviations. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Sharp, uh, any other oh, comments? Yeah, not that I can think of. I think certainly, um, yeah, the panel has been pretty, you know, quite informative. So um, yeah, there isn't any, any other comments. So yeah, thank you for your okay. time and I appreciate it. Before I let you go, I'll just uh, ask committee members if they have any questions uh, to the public member. No, seeing none. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sharp and uh, Mr. Hutchison and Mr. Hussein. Um, so I have a resolution that the Artistic Holdings Incorporated application number B-77-1161 be referred to the regular Planning Advisory Committee meeting for consideration. Can I get a motion, please? Councillor Alsop, seconded by Councillor Feeney. Uh, questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting. Councillor Sanderson. Second by Councillor Alsop, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. All right, moving on to the uh, Planning Advisory Committee. Uh, for attendance purposes, uh, Mr. David Joyce uh, provided his regrets. Uh, any disclosure of pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? Seeing none, uh, can I uh, have a resolution at the minutes of the City Council Planning Advisory, or sorry, City Council Planning Committee meeting and Planning Advisory Committee meeting held on April 4th, 2020. To uh, be approved. Mr. Beltudis, Mr. Jennings, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, no deputations. Uh, correspondence. I'm going to have a motion to receive any all correspondence received by the city clerk's office. And we did get a couple late submissions. Councillor Alsop, seconded by Mr. Beltudis, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And uh, referrals from the public meeting, 6.1, notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 10-245, 318 Coleman Street, City of Belleville, owners Jacob Stewart, agent is Enidia uh, Cervenas, Echo View Consulting Services, file number B-77-1146. 
Resolution is that report number PP-2022-20 dated March 2nd, 2022, regarding the notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 10245, as amended, 318 Coleman Street, City of Belleville, County of Hastings be received as information, and that staff report back at such time as input from the public, commenting agencies and municipal departments has been received, assessed, and addressed to the satisfaction of the Engineering and Development Services Department. Somebody to move that, please. Ms. Brown, second by Councillor Kelly. Uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. 6.2, notice of complete application, introductory public meeting for proposed amendments to the Belleville official plan and zoning bylaw 10-245, uh, 188, 190, and 196 Dundas Street East, and 120, 120A, and 126 Burnham Street, City of Belleville. Owner is Artistic Holdings Incorporated, agent is RFA Planning Consultant Incorporated, and file numbers B-77-1161 and B-50-3-40. And the resolution reads that report number PP-2022-21, dated May 2nd, 2022, regarding of notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed amendments to the official plan and zoning bylaw number 10245 is amended. 188, 190, and 196 Dundas Street East, and 120, 120A, and 126 Burnham Street, City of Belleville County of Hastings be received as information, and that staff report back at such time as input from the public, commenting agencies, and municipal departments has been received, assessed, and addressed to the satisfaction of the Engineering and Development Services Department. Somebody to move that, please. Councillor Feeney and Mr. Bell Tudis, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Sanderson. Uh, yes, thank you. Through the, through the chair, on uh, page 83 of our package uh, in the uh, entrance brief 3.2, they, uh, they talk about uh, uh, the fact that they do not believe a detailed traffic study uh, is required. And I'm, uh, I guess the question would be for, uh, for staff, if we're going to have uh, 30 plus vehicles uh, at that corner on top of uh, normal traffic, I wouldn't say that it'll create a choke, choke point, but it might create a pressure point. And I'm just wondering if, uh, if there is consideration being given to putting a set of traffic lights at that intersection at Burnham and Dundas. Uh, and if so, how would it be funded? Thank you. Thank you, uh, staff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to Councilor Sanderson. Uh, I don't have exactly a comment on the funding of a potential traffic light at the moment, uh, something I can look into for you. Uh, at this time, we're, we've circulated the traffic brief to our development engineers who would provide comment and direction uh, regarding that for us. Um, we haven't received comments just yet on it, but I, I imagine we will. Um, so if there are concerns about it, th th that would be reflected in their comments. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to follow up on the question that I asked um, during the planning meeting as it relates to the, the landscaping and fencing between the uh, single detached and the building itself. It wasn't that long ago that we had a similar type of situation up on Millennium Parkway, albeit it was a commercial unit, not a residential unit, but a commercial unit where um, the space between the parking and people's backyards became problematic. And we worked very hard to make sure that there was a sufficient barrier through there. So while I appreciate there's a little green space in the corner, to me, even at its, its smallest point, 1.5 meters, between a car and somebody's backyard, and knowing full well in that area that the backyards are not terribly big, um, it seems to me that there would be concerns there. So I, I would like to ask if during the next phase, staff can look at, is there an opportunity um, to create um, greater space? And I, and I know it's gonna be a problem because of the way it's set up between people's backyards and uh, where the parking spaces. 
Equally so, because it is east-west, um, the, the way the building is facing is whether or not having a four-story building there will block out the sun into the backyards of people, particularly the, in the morning. Um, it, I, I know four stories isn't particularly high, 13 meters isn't particularly high, but again, these backyards um, on Foster are not terribly big, and I suspect that it will be somewhat prohibitive. So I think it's worth looking at whether or not we're going to be blocking sun with a building that height. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, staff will make note. Uh, any other questions or comments from committee members? No. Um, I, yeah, I agree with the uh, daylight angles um, and I know even just visual angles. Um, it's always that balance of creating a development with a little higher concentration of density and balancing that with the privacy of existing residents. So uh, in addition to uh, daylight, it would be nice to see there's some elevation drawings, but uh, it would be nice to be able to see the analysis of the impact it will have uh, from the apartments into backyards, in, into existing homes, uh, just to make sure that we're striking that right balance. So I'll leave that with staff. Uh, no other questions or comments on this one. Uh, I've got a motion on the floor, all in favor. That's carried, thank you. So now moving on to reports, uh, 7.1 staff recommendation report for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 3014. Uh, 1374 Tutsville Road, City of Balvo. Owner is Elmer and Sharon Prest. Uh, file number is B-77-1159. Resolution is that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. That bylaw, or sorry, that application B-77-1159 to amend the City of Balvo zoning bylaw number 3014 as amended for 1374 Tutsville Road, City of Balvo be approved as follows. That zoning bylaw number 3014 as amended, be amended to rezone a portion of the subject land from prime agriculture PA 44 zone to rural residential RR zone for the lot addition lands and rural RU zone for the retained lands. Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Mr. Jennings. Uh, any questions or comments on this one? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 7.2 staff recommendation report for proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 10245 as amended 217 219 North Front Street City of Balville. Owner is MB North Front Street Incorporated. Agent is Duro Bicanic, or Bicanic uh, Care of Bicorp Design Group Limited. File number is B 77 1160. Resolution reads that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. That application B-77-1160 to amend the City of Balboa zoning bylaw number 10-245 as amended for 217-219 North Front Street, City of Balboa be approved as follows. That zoning bylaw number 10-245 as amended be amended by rezoning the subject land from Highway Commercial C3 zone to Highway Commercial C3 61 zone with special provisions uh, to add motor vehicle washing establishment as a permitted use and reduce the required interior side yard along the north property line. If somebody to move that, please. Councillor Alsop and Mr. Beltutis. Uh, any questions or comments on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. 7.3 staff recommendation report for proposed amendments to Belleville's Loyalist Secondary Plan and zoning bylaws 2076-80 and 10 an application for draft plan of subdivision, part of lots 31 and 32, broken front concession, and concession one township of Sydney, now city of Belleville County of Hastings. Owner is 256-6531 Ontario Incorporated and 266-3925 Ontario Incorporated. Agent is RFA Planning Consultant Incorporated and it's file number B-50-339, uh, sorry, dash 39, B-77-1154 and 12T-21002. Resolution reads that pursuant to the planning report PP 2022-24, the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. The Balville's Loyalist Secondary Plan as amended concerning parts of lots 31 and 32, 
Broken Front Concession and Concession One Township of Sydney, now City of Balboa County of Hastings be amended by redesigning portions of Schedule A land use plan uh, by redesigning portions of Schedule A land use plan to specify the location of the parkland, stormwater pond and the environmental protection lands Schedule D, Stormwater Management Plan to address the extent of stormwater pond, and Schedule E, Transportation and Trail System Plan to modify the location of the propo proposed collector road that zoning bylaw number 2076-80 be amended, uh, be repealed in its entirety for the subject lands as shown on attachment two. The Schedule A, map number three of bylaw Number 10245 is amended, be amended by extending the schedule to include the subject's land as shown on attachment two. The zoning bylaw number 10245 as amended, be amended by rezoning part of lots 31 and 32, broken front concession and concession one township of Sydney, now city of Balville County of Hastings from the agricultural A2A zone and the environmental protection E zone to the residential third density R3-4 zone residential 6th density R6-37 zone, residential 7th density R7-15 zone, open spaces O1 zone, environmental control E zone, and community facility CF-13 zone to facilitate the development of 695 dwelling units consisting of single detached dwellings, semi-detached dwellings, townhouses, horizontal multiple attached dwellings and eight low rise apartment buildings and three high density apartment buildings. That approval of a draft plan of subdivision prepared by RFA planning consultant incorporated dated November 19, 2021 as shown on attachment three to engineering development services report number PP-2022-24 be granted for the lands identified as part of lots 31 and 32 Broken Front, Concession, and Concession One Township of Sydney, now City of Belleville, County of Hastings, file 12T-21002, uh, subject to the draft plan conditions outlined in attachment 10 to report number PP-2022-24. Uh, could I get someone to move that? Councillor Alsop, seconded by Ms. Brown. Um, any questions or comments while I take a drink? Mr. Jennings. Yes, thank you. Uh, through the chair, I guess to um, traffic. <laughs> um, I, I, I just want to say I also have concerns about the uh, the small segment of Hastings Park Drive. Um, I'm I'm looking at this plan in every way possible along with the uh, the adjacent subdivision, which I realize is, is a different application, but the way I see it, anybody living in Potter's Creek in any phase of Potter's Creek who happens to be commuting to Loyalist College or CFB Trenton or even the high school is going to go through Hastings Park Drive to get there as the fastest and easiest route to get to, uh, to Walbridge Loyalist Road. So I, I don't, how that can be addressed, but I think that's a significant issue that something needs to happen. Uh, at least it needs to be considered somewhere, I think. Okay, uh, staff, uh, can someone answer that question, please? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for for those comments. And, and um, uh, Greg Pynchon and I, did submit a, a memo to PAC with respect to the, um, the comments and concerns specifically relating to the connection of Hastings Park Drive. Um, and as the, the connection does relate um, mostly to the connection that would be established in uh, phase 9B of the Potter's Creek subdivision, uh, we will refer those comments for consideration and evaluation in greater detail during that um, subdivision review process when, when the application is received. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Feeney. I was just wondering, um, as part of the process, this is a big project that's already taking 25 years to complete. Um, 
would it be possible to um, approve it with uh, the proviso that we would be looking at as the project uh, develops, that there would be um, traffic calming and different things that would be taken into consideration? Is that possible? Uh, staff, uh, you can answer that, please. Uh, certainly, uh, through, through the chair, um, it, it is something I know the city does have a traffic common policy uh, that can be used in situations uh, if issues develop. However, um, I think it's, it's one of those things where, where we're dealing with the street that's um, essentially it's between two subdivisions that are under development. So we, we have an existing um, transportation route and and I mean, currently it connects to Avonlow. And so I, I think in terms of this plan, um, essentially that, that connection is intended to be maintained. And I think uh, as, as my colleague uh, mentioned, um, you know, certainly we will be looking at, uh, at options. I think when the uh, Potter's Creek 9B application uh, for redlining comes forward to look at, um, you know, whether whether providing a future connection to the east is appropriate still, or um, or how uh, those issues could be mitigated. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Ashton. Yeah, just for timing on uh, Potter's Nine B, we're expecting an application before the end of the year, so it would be in a timely manner. We were, as um, <clears throat> Manager McAdam said, we would be able to do sort of thorough review at that point in time on the uh, transportation network. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Feeney, does that satisfy your inquiry? Yes, it does. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on this? Uh, Ms. Brown. Sorry, trying to get it off mute. Um, uh, just to follow on to Councillor Feeney's question, um, would the roundabout that's indicating the connection to Walbridge Loyal is not be considered traffic calming? I'll refer that to staff. So I guess perhaps maybe some of the inquiry regarding traffic calming isn't necessarily related to Hastings Park Drive and, and what will be thoroughly reviewed under 9B. And maybe some of the questions is just referred to uh, traffic calming within this particular development. Is that fair yeah. to say? Yes. Yeah. So staff, uh, looking for some comments there, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there is the roundabout. Um, there's probably two round of, there's sort of traffic control plus uh, traffic calming roundabouts. We do have the provision to look at further traffic calming through the subdivisions if we wanted to do, for lack of a better word, mini roundabouts at some of those intersections as well. So that's in the draft conditions as well. So thank uh, you. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments on this matter? No, seeing none. Okay, I got a motion on the floor, a very lengthy motion. Uh, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, information matters. Uh, official plan and uh, that I have a resolution that the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment monitoring report to May 2nd, 2022 be received. Moved by Mr. Jennings, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. Uh, any questions or comments on those? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, general business, any items under general business? Okay, seeing none, uh, I need a motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Mr. Baltuda, second by Councillor Feeney. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Thank you very much, have a good evening.